You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, YNR fans. It is Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I have a special New Year's Eve edition for you. We are doing kind of a 2023 wrap up. And today I'm going to talk to you about the best and worst couples in Genoa City in 2023. I've got the five best and the five worst, and I cannot wait to read your comments, whether you agree, disagree, think that there should be other people on there. I look forward to all your comments. I love it. All right. Be Be sure to reach down, click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's dig in. We're going to start with the best couples. I'm going to rate number five, four, three, two, one, and number one is the best couple of the year. All right, on my list of best couples, you may be a little surprised about this one, but I have for number five, Phyllis Summers and Jeremy Stark. The reason I have them on there, well, first, I love Jeremy Stark. He was such a silver fox. He had so much potential. He was just a really good villain. And I think he and Phyllis really could have been great if he had stuck around. Of course, the plot they got into was really messy and they never really got to play those notes, but I thought they were almost a perfect pairing. They are schemers. They do revenge. They like to plot against people. They're of their age appropriate for each other. They're both very attractive. I felt their chemistry, you know, up until the time he tried to kill her and then she killed him. But, you know, they say it's a thin line between love and hate, maybe between affection and murder as well. But for me, they were my number five favorite couple for the year. My number four favorite couple, I think, might polarize some people. You may disagree strongly because a lot of you guys think there's still scheming going on. I don't. So my number four best couple, Diane Jenkins and Jack Abbott. I know so many people, because I see it in the comments here and other places on soap social media, there's people that are still sure Diane's playing a long con, that she's actually working with Tucker. There is nothing to indicate that other than some cheap tabloid sites writing lies for clicks. It's just not there. Diane actually has come back a changed person. Now, at the point they decide to write her off, maybe they'll do a retcon and change that. But for right now, Diane is all in. She came back for Kyle, and then she and Jack fell for each other again slowly, organically. They built it up right. She didn't trick him into falling for her or into bed with her or anything like that. He fought it and then they both fell and then they've gotten married. They're very sweet. I enjoy seeing them together. I don't enjoy seeing them together in bed and I don't need YNR to keep giving us sex scenes with them. But aside from that, they are my number four best couple for the year. Number three on my list is Nikki Newman and Victor Newman. And I have them on the list because sometimes they they do each other dirty. And remember at one point they were having that creepy open marriage thing when she was sleeping with Arturo and he was he had fooled around with that crazy shrink at the prison. It was just gross. Anyway, but for all of this year, I feel like Nikki and Victor have been on the same page. I feel like they have shown a lot of love and a lot of endurance as a couple. You know, she's fallen off the wagon. He's very concerned about her. He has vowed to make anybody pay that hurts her. And I just feel like they had a really solid year together as a very loving, mature couple. And I appreciate they didn't give us sex scenes of them. And I love them. And that's why they are my number three best couple. Number two. Best couple for the year for me, Chelsea Lawson and Billy Abbott. Ever since he literally pulled her off the ledge during her mental health crisis, I have been enjoying them together. And of course, they have that messy, messy backstory where back in, was it like Myanmar, where she drugged him and slept with him and then she turned up pregnant And the whole thing came out this year about her being Johnny's biological mother. They've had so much good material. And I also like, although he pulled her off the ledge, I feel like she has talked him off ledges all year long too, because he starts to get into these spirals where he wants to go dark and that whole gambling addiction side of him comes out and Chelsea recognizes him doing these things. She calls him out. He appreciates it. He backs down. 
They are functioning so well together as a couple. They have great chemistry. They're very sweet. I want to see them get married in 2024. I don't know about you guys. They don't need to have any more kids or they could. That's fine. But I do love them together. And that's why they're my number two couple. My number one couple for the year. If you listen here regularly, you can probably already guess it. It's Adam Newman and Sally Spectra. And I'm so happy that they are reunited just in time for the holidays. Although with Claire and Jordan sucking up all the airtime, we haven't seen a lot of them. We've seen a lot more of Danny and Cricket than I want to, but not nearly enough of Adam and Sally. Now that Sally has ditched Nick Newman, her ill-fated rebound, and she's back with Adam, they're all in. They're so sweet together. They have the best chemistry. I feel like they're a very good match personality-wise. And I really hope that she gets pregnant in 2024 and we get a rainbow baby after their devastating loss. Love them. All right. Worst couples. Again, we're going to go five, four, three, two, one. And the top one is the worst couple of 2023 to me. Number five, Chance Chancellor and Sharon Newman. I'm not going to go into the age thing because I know that triggers a lot of you guys. It's not even that. It's the fact that they have not constructed a romance for them. This is the entirety of their romance. Them talking over coffee at the coffee shop, them being out to dinner maybe twice, them banging once in the stock room at Crimson Lights, and an occasional kiss. That's it. This is not an epic romance. It's not a great romance. It's not even a romance to defend. And that's why Summer is encroaching on it. I just feel like Chance and Sharon, like we've been told they're a couple, but we haven't been shown that they are a couple. There's no romance. There's no affection. There's not a lot of storyline there, yet we're supposed to view them as a couple. That's why they're my number five worst couple. Number four worst, Victoria Newman and Nate Hastings. Nate is extremely hot. I know why Victoria wants him in the sack, but boy, can he be toxic. And as for Victoria, you look up toxic in the dictionary and there is a glossy color photo of her. She has been horrible. She, as far as I'm concerned, just from an HR standpoint, she sexually harassed him into bed while he was with another woman and he let it happen. He wanted the power. He wanted everything Victoria was offering. So he cheated and it was just, they started out so icky and then they started conspiring together and just being total douche nozzles at work, you know, sidelining Nick, basically pushing Nikki aside, trying to just get rid of everyone so they could run the whole show because they were selfish and power hungry. I think they brought out the worst in each other. And that's why they're my number four worst couple. And I really hope they're over and done. Number three on my list Tucker McCall and Ashley Abbott. Ashley never should have gotten involved with this guy. Again, he is a cheating playboy who hasn't changed his ways. What he has done is he has been able to conceal those bad parts of himself. And don't get me wrong, I love Tucker. I love Trevor St. John, but he is not a one woman man. He is shady as heck. He's a schemer. He's vengeful. He's petty. He's funny. And he's got a really hot bod, but uh, Ashley should never have put her toe back into that water. She was mostly kind of doing it to be petty towards Jack and Diane. And then I think she took it too far and then she married him. Then they had that nasty blow up in Paris. And I hope she doesn't walk back into that again and that they are done for good. And that's why they're my number three worst couple. My number two worst couple is Audra Charles and whoever she's with at the moment. Audra is gorgeous. Zuleika Silver is so beautiful. Like she's almost hard to look at. It's like looking at the sun. She's so beautiful. She has an amazing body. I know why all these men want her, but none of them are good relationships. Her and Kyle are a terrible couple. He broke things off with Summer 
and made a beeline penis first for Audra two minutes later and fell in bed with her. It was icky. It's not a relationship. It's this weird rebound sex thing. And now she's trying to get him to betray his family. Awful. Audra and Tucker are sketchy as heck also because she keeps banging him while each of them are involved with other people and they scheme together. They've covered the statutory rape thing up together. They have this long and sketchy history. That's a bad relationship. Audra is also trying to hook up with Nate and has been trying to for a while. If she does, that's going to be a bad couple. Just whoever Audra has in her bed with her, it's just a mess because she seems incapable of love and disinterested in love. So whoever she's with, it's going to be a really bad thing. All right. The worst relationship for me in 2023 on Young the Restless was Phyllis and Danny and Christine. I realize that's not one couple, it's two, but really to me, the couple that matters in this discussion is Phyllis and Christine. I think Danny is just a chew toy they are fighting over and the couple in question is Phyllis Summers and her intense dislike of the bug, aka Cricket, aka Christine Williams. I don't think Phyllis would be kissing Danny or remotely interested in him if Christine didn't want him. She doesn't want Christine to have him. That's it. And Phyllis and Danny, you know, they have nothing but horrors in their past. She drugged him. She raped him. She lied and said she was pregnant with his child when she wasn't. She tricked him into marrying her. She kept the lie going for a long time. It, it was just so awful. And now she's trying to like make a play for him. Christine and Danny actually had a legit romance way back in the day. She chose Paul. Now she and Paul are over. And that breakup was ridiculous. The way that they had Paul walking out on her, which he wouldn't have done, but they feel free because they're not planning on bringing Doug Davidson back. So for all those reasons, Phyllis and Danny and Danny and Christine and Phyllis and Christine, that's my worst couple of 2023 on Young and the Restless. Definitely drop your comments below. I can't wait to read them, whether you agree or disagree. Be sure to click subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon because I'm here talking Young and the Restless with you seven days a week. As always, this has been Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 